Hey, hey there, crafty friends. This is Misty with Gleespin Designs. Welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. And if you are new here, let me know in the comments. I would love to say hi. For today's video, I asked in my community tab about a week ago, what type of home decor is your favorite? And most of you said farmhouse. So I have seven high-end farmhouse decor DIYs. And you all know I love jumping right into the crafts, so let's get crafting. DIY number one is this large, beautiful textured vase. For this DIY, you'll need one of these really large new glass vases from Dollar Tree, and I do believe they are in the Mother's Day section. So painting glass can kind of be a pain, so I'm going to take some of my white Rust-Oleum chalk paint, and then I'm going to add some baking soda to it. About a one-to-one -one ratio, or just a little bit less baking soda is kind of how I like it. And then you want to mix it up completely until there is no lumps. And this gives you a much better coverage, and you'll definitely notice if you've tried this technique. And yes, doing this technique will give you some texture, but I want a lot of texture. So I'm going to take some of this Dollar Tree sand and add some of that to the paint as well. And really the amount of sand depends on what type of texture you want and how thick you would like it. Just like with the baking soda, you're going to want to mix it up completely until there is no lumps and you have this absolutely gorgeous textured paint. Normally when I do the paint and baking soda technique without the sand for texture, I apply it with a sponge. Well, you can't necessarily do that with this type of mixture with a sand in it because the sand just kind of wants to stick into the sponge. So I just kind of threw the sponge to the side and started slapping it right on the base with my paintbrush. And this worked absolutely perfect and it was really super satisfying to do as well. When applying this to the vase, I made sure to cover the entire outside of the vase as well as the top and also a little bit down inside. I didn't get the entire inside, I just painted a few inches down inside. Once you have the vase fully covered, let it dry completely and you will have this absolutely stunning textured look. I don't know about you guys, but I absolutely love this textured look. Texture is super, super trendy right now and this turned out absolutely perfect. Again, you're going to want to make sure your base is completely dry before you move on to the next step, which is just taking some painter's tape. This is actually, I believe, the Frog Tape brand. I will have it linked down below in the description box. I prefer using this Frog Tape compared to the Blue Tape because I just feel like it sticks better to my projects and it also doesn't pull as much paint off of projects as the Blue regular painter's tape does. As you could see, I took some of that frog tape and I just placed it around the vase about a quarter of the way up and then I used that sponge that I tried to use earlier to sponge on some black chalk paint underneath that paint line. And underneath that line where the painter's tape is, I want this to be pretty solid. Like, I don't want really any of that white showing. So just keep sponging on the black paint until that bottom part is completely covered. Then once you have that bottom part completely filled in, you want to remove the frog tape before the paint completely dries because you're going to take your little sponge and you're going to start dabbing again, but you're going to kind of do it like a dry brushing technique, but it's a dry sponging technique. So you're just going to take your sponge and you're just going to do a little bit of black paint and I kind of used the paint that was already on the vase. That's why I did this before it dried so that I could just kind of use the wet paint and make kind of like an ombre faded effect, I guess you could say. And once it's dry, it will look like this. Along with the many other great things that Dollar Tree is now carrying, they also have different colors of their cotton twine and also in bigger rolls as well. I used the black cotton twine and where the vase indents in at, I wrap that twine around a few times and then tie it into place. I do make sure I leave nice long strands so that I can tie our beads and our tassels onto the vase as well. For the beads, I will be using two beads from this Easter garland from Dollar Tree and I just cut the twine and took two beads off of it and painted them black with my black chalk paint. For the tassels, I'll be using another one of the new Dollar Tree twines, and that is this white and black twine. I love this. I think it is so pretty, and I was super excited when I found it. To make the tassels, spread your fingers apart and then wrap the twine around your fingers at least 10 to 15 times. The size of the tassel depends on how far apart your fingers are spread, or if you're wrapping your twine around something else. It just depends on how big that is as well, and you can make your tassel as big or as small as you would like. 
and also the more you wrap the twine around your fingers, the fuller your tassel will be. Then just take another piece of that twine and place it through your fingers and tie it into a knot, leaving a loop up at the top. I make sure that my string I'm using to tie the tassel together is long enough to where I can wrap it around a few times after I tie it and then tie it again, holding it into place. Then just cut off any of the excess pieces and on the end of the tassel where the long loops are, you're going to cut those loops as well so that you can form your tassel. Then just cut all of the pieces so that they are nice and even and you have a really cute little tassel. And you will need two of those tassels for this project. And now all you have to do is add your beads and your tassel to your pieces of twine that are hanging onto your vase. I simply strung on the bead and then added my tassel. Now the reason why I wanted my strands to be so long is because I want my tassels and beads to be different lengths. So I'm gonna have one being longer than the other. So you're going to tie it and make sure when you tie it, it's at the length that you want it to hang. Then just repeat the same steps for the other piece of twine on the base, adding the bead and the tassel. And here is a look at how this absolutely gorgeous textured vase turned out. This vase is probably one of my favorite vases that I've done in a long time. I love the size of this vase and that texture is absolutely gorgeous. And not only does it look great all on its own, but you can add many different florals and it will look beautiful as well. On to DIY number two, which is this gorgeous tray you could make two ways. For this DIY, I used two of the Dollar Tree canvases. I believe this is the eight by 10 size. It really doesn't matter on the size. It just depends on how big you would like your tray to be. Using one of the Dollar Tree roller blades, and you guys, I love these roller blades from Dollar Tree. They come in handy so, so much. So definitely grab one of these up if you see them. Use the roller blade and go along the staples all the way around the frame, then just remove the canvas from the frame. You will do this to both of the canvases, removing the canvas, just leaving the frame. Then I take my white with stoleum chalk paint and I go through with a heavy dry brushing technique, covering the frame, but leaving a little bit of that original color peeking through. And again, you will do this to both of the canvas frames. Once you have both of the canvas frames painted, I'm going to use some beads that I got off of Amazon. I will have them linked down below in the description box. They actually come with six different sizes and for a great price. Using some apple barrel paint and some water, I just make a faux stain and I'm going to add some of these beads into a bag. This is how I paint or stain my beads if I'm doing a lot of them. And I just place it right in a bag and pour the stain or the paint right in the bag with them, doing a little bit at a time. You always wanna do just a little bit and add more if you need to. Simply move the beads around inside the bag until they are completely covered. Then you can just pour them out on a paper towel or whatever you would like and look how gorgeous those stained beads are. The reason why I stained these beads is because I want them to match the color of the canvas frame that's peeking through my white chalk paint. So I just, again, mix up those beads right into that faux stain and I love how they turned out. You could let them dry overnight or just do what I did and use a heat gun or even a hair blow dryer to have them dry within just a few minutes. You want to make sure the beads are completely dry before you start gluing them to the frame. I just used my hot glue gun because I do have the Gorilla Glue hot glue sticks in my glue gun and those glue sticks work absolutely amazing. You guys have probably heard me talk about them before. I will have them linked down below in the description box. You could use E6000 or even wood glue if you would like, but for me, this works perfect. Glue enough wood beads to go completely around the canvas frame and you want to make sure the holes are vertical so that you don't see them when you place the second frame on top. Now that I have my wood beads going completely around the canvas frame, I'm going in with a white with stoleum chalk paint and a chippy brush and just doing a heavy dry brushing over all of the wood beads going completely around the canvas. Again, just covering them enough to where they are covered, but a little bit of that color shows through that we stained. Next, I just use my hot glue gun again and I add some hot glue going on all of the little wood beads so that I can place the second canvas on top. When adding the second canvas on top of the wood beads, you want to make sure that you press down on both of the sides in the center to make sure that the wood beads and the canvas frame touch and adhere together. 
For the bottom of the tray, I'm going to be using these jumbo crab sticks you can get at Walmart or there is also some on Amazon. I will have a link for those down below. Line up enough of the craft sticks to cover the bottom of the tray and then just trace out those sides that are hanging over so you can cut them down and then you will have perfect pieces to cover the bottom of the tray. These jumbo craft sticks really do cut very easily with just a simple pair of scissors and you want to make sure when you cut them, you cut them all at the same length. Using the same faux stain that I made earlier for the wood beads, I'm going to just go ahead and stain all of these wood pieces as well, and all you have to do is just paint it right on. You guys know I love this stain technique. It literally dries within just a few minutes, no icky smells, and you can make really any color you would like. If you want purple stain, just add some purple paint to some water, and you have purple stain. Once they are all stained and dry, I take another chippy brush and that white Australium chalk paint again, and I just do another heavy dry brushing on all of those wood pieces as well. Once all of those pieces are stained, painted, and dry, you're going to flip your canvas around and start hot gluing those pieces right to the bottom of the canvas to make your bottom to your tray. Like I said, you could do this tray two different ways, so here's how the first way turned out. I think this is just so pretty, and I had to show this tray both ways because I could not figure out which way I liked better, whether it was sitting or whether it was raised. So here is the unraised tray, and I think it came out so cute. But if you would like your tray raised, it is super, super simple. Just take a glass candle holder from Dollar Tree, paint it white, and then just hot glue it right to the bottom of your tray. If you're going to use your tray raised, I suggest painting the bottom of the tray as well. And here's how this adorable raised tray turned out. I absolutely adore the way this tray turned out, and I love that you can make it two different ways, and both ways turn out gorgeous. And like I said, you could make them actually several different sizes as well, just depending on the canvas size that you use. I would absolutely love to hear what you guys all think, so let me know down in the comments, do you like it raised or unraised? DIY number three is this cute little house, which would be perfect for your tiered tray. You will need one of these galvanized houses from the Dollar Tree that have a hole in the center. Using another piece of the frog tape, I place it as close as I can down to the bottom by the wood stand, covering up the metal house so that I can paint the bottom part where that wood is with my white Rust-Oleum chalk paint. I want to create more of a roof on this house, so I'm going to use these bamboo sticks you guys have probably seen me use many times on my channel. They come so in handy. Again, they are on my Amazon store, and I will definitely have a link down in the description box. I painted a few of those bamboo sticks with my black chalk paint, then you could also remove the painter's tape down at the bottom once the bottom of your house is dry, and then I'm going to take those black bamboo sticks and I'm going to place it up at the top where the roof is and just use my pencil to kind of mark where I need to cut the bamboo stick. After I cut the first piece, I hold it in place making sure that it is the size I need and then I just use the bamboo stick and place it on the other side and mark down that side as well so I can cut it down. And once those are cut, you can go ahead and just hot glue them right into place at the top of the house forming the roof. For the hole that's in the center of the house, I'm going to be using these wood planks from the Dollar Tree. They come in a pack of six. Again, these are another thing that come in handy so, so much. And I just used a box cutter and cut it down to the size I needed and painted it with my white chalk paint. So like I said in the description box and in the title, no Cricut, no Chalkator. These are not Chalkator, I promise. These are literally a fraction of the price of Chalkator. And better yet, these are even on Amazon. And I will have a link down below for these. And you pretty much get all of these for the price of one Chalkator um, transfer. So this is an amazing deal and they work just as good as Chalkator. I'm going to be using these little farm animals and I'm going to be using the chicken. And as you can see, there's the brand. It is the Paints Transfer and that's Paints with an S. So that is the brand if you would like to check them out on Amazon. 
And again, I will have a link down below in the description box for you to do so. So I just take my scissors and cut off the little chicken and you can cut these down if you'd like. You can see like the little parts, lines where you can cut. So you could use them as one or cut them down if you would like as well. So then I just take my chalk paste. Again, you can also use chalk paint and I just fill in the transfer and look how stinking cute that chicken turned out. Then I just use my hot glue gun, add some hot glue going around that circle on the back of the house and then just place your little chicken right in the center. At Dollar Tree, they carry several different items with this little wreath on them, and whenever I do a DIY with something like this on it, I always save it if I'm not using it for another project, and these little wreaths come off super, super easy, so you definitely want to save something like that if you come across it. Using that little wreath and some Dollar Tree pit berries, I believe these ones came out in the fall, but they do still have them in stores, and I, we are actually on the 2nd of May now, so they do still have them out, and I just take it and simply wrap it around the wreath, kind of trying to make sure I have those little berries facing forward. I simply just use my hot glue gun, add some hot glue right to the wreath, and then place it onto the house so that the chicken is in the center. Here I am looking at the house thinking that of course it needs something extra, so I take a craft stick and paint it black with my black chalk paint, and once I have it painted black, I do cut off the top, and I'm trying to kind of create a chimney. So once I cut that top part off, I do add another little bit of black chalk paint so that you can't see the wood from where I cut it. And then just simply cut it down and hot glue it to the back of your house. And then of course I thought the wreath needed a little extra something so I take some of the Dollar Tree twine. This is obviously the black and white twine. This is one of their new twines that they have out now. We used it earlier. Again, I love this twine, and all I'm going to do is just wrap it around a few of my fingers. The farther apart you make your fingers, again, the bigger your bow will be, just like a tassel. So I'm just doing a really small little bow, I guess you could say, and after I have it wrapped a few times, I take another piece of twine and just tie it in the center, creating that bow. I make sure that the piece that I'm tying in the center is long enough that when I cut it, I can use those little pieces as the tails to the bow. And now you have a cute and simple twine bow. Then all you have to do is just simply glue your bow right to your wreath and this DIY is done. And here is how this super cute little house turned out. I absolutely love doing simple little easy DIYs and this is one that turned out so cute and again like I said earlier it looks absolutely adorable on that tray and it would look just as adorable anywhere else in your home. DIY number four is this farm fresh flowers box. For this DIY, you will need some more of those Dollar Tree wood planks that we used in the previous DIY, and all you're going to do is use a box knife to cut one of them in half, and you will use two full ones as well. So therefore, you will have four pieces total, two long and two short, and I did take my sanding block and just go ahead and sand those smaller pieces, making sure there is no jagged or sharp edges. Then to go along with the rest of the other DIYs, I use that white Rust-Oleum chalk paint again and I paint all four of those wood pieces and you want to make sure you get the ends in size as well. Once they are all painted and dry, I use my glue gun and add a bit of glue onto one of the longer pieces and then attach one of the shorter pieces to the side. I do the same exact thing on the other side of the long piece of wood and I just attach one of those shorter pieces right down there at the end. Then I place the second long piece on the other side of the short pieces, creating a box. For the bottom of the box, just like I did with the tray, I'm going to be using these jumbo craft sticks. Again, they can be found at Walmart or on Amazon. I will have a link in the description box. Lay a few of the craft sticks down, place the box right on top, and then trace out the sides so that you can cut them down again, just like we did with the tray. Once they are all cut down, I did use my hot glue gun and just hot glue them right to the bottom of the box. Once 
Once you have your box done, you can go in with the white Rust-Oleum chalk paint just like you did on the outside and paint the inside of the box as well. Using the bamboo sticks that I got off of Amazon, I told you guys these things come in handy so, so much, so I'm just going to take a few of those and paint them black with my black chalk paint. Once the black bamboo sticks are dry, I just take them and hold them up against the sides of the box so that I know where I need to cut them and I just mark it down with a pencil and I cut enough to do this to both sides of the box, which will be eight pieces in total, four longer and four shorter. Once they are all cut down, you're just going to hot glue them to the side of your box, creating a square. And again, you are going to do the exact same thing on the other side of the box as well. To create the X in the center of the square on the side of the box, I take the bamboo stick and I just place it down and mark where I need the cut at those angles. To make the other side of the X, I want to make sure that it is center, so I place the first piece in without gluing it, just so that I know that when I basically cut it, it's going to be nice and even and where I need it to be. For the second piece, I did not want it to overlap, so I just cut it down in the center so that it makes that X shape without overlapping. Just kind of keep playing with your pieces and making sure that they fit before you glue them down. And I did not like how after I cut them, you could kind of see the wood from the normal pieces of bamboo stick showing. So I did just kind of paint the ends with my black chalk paint. And then all you have to do is glue all of those little pieces into place. And then you will do the exact same thing on the other side of the box. For some detail on the front of the box, I took some of the gold Dollar Tree thumbtacks and I placed them right into a little mini Jenga block or tumbling tower block so that they didn't move and I just painted them with my black chalk paint. I did try to just push them right into the wood and they did go in but they kind of poked through just a little bit on the other side and I didn't really like that so I take some of the Dollar Tree garden shears and I cut off like the nail part of the thumbtack and then I just add some hot glue and place it onto the box that way. I added one of the thumbtacks to each of the four corners on the box. Then using another new item from Dollar Tree, which is these rub-on transfers that are a farmhouse style. I love these. I think they're so cute. That farm fresh flowers, seeds, stems, blooms is so cute. So all I did was cut it down to the size that I needed, and then I'm just going to transfer it right to the front of my box. When doing these rub-on transfers, I think it is best to kind of peel them off as you go so that if you peel anything up, you can just lay it right back down and then place it into place. Then all you have to do is add whatever type of florals or whatever you would like to put in your box and here is how this super cute DIY turned out. DIY number five is definitely one of my favorites and that is this farmhouse bead garland. For this DIY, you will need one of the new beach themed bead garlands from Dollar Tree. They do have several different ones, but they are all square beads. So all you're going to do is cut off the string and then take those little wood cutouts off and keep the beads. These bead garlands have 25 beads on them, so you can't necessarily make two even piles. So I did 12 in one bag and 13 in another. I am doing this because I want my beads to be two different colors. If you would like your beads to be all one color, you could just place them all in one bag. My first bag of beads I want to be white, so I'm just taking some white Rust-Oleum chalk paint, placing a little bit into the bag, swishing it around, making sure that those beads are completely covered, and then emptying them out, making sure that you kind of spread them apart so that they don't stick together. For the second set of the wood beads, I want to create another faux stain, and this time I'm doing it with black chalk paint. So I just add a little bit to my water, and then I'm going to take the water a little bit at a time and place it right into the bag with the wood beads. 
Do the exact same thing you did with the white paint and just swish those all around until the beads are completely covered. Then I pour the stain out into a container so that I don't get it all over my workplace and then empty the beads out onto a paper towel and again separate them so that they don't stick when they dry. And look how absolutely gorgeous these wood beads are once they are completely dry. I love that look. To string the beads, I'm going to be using this jute twine from the Dollar Tree, and I do believe this is the jute twine from the automotive section, but you're going to want to take a piece of tape and place it onto the end of the twine, because as you can see here, it was kind of hard to actually string the beads without having the tape on there. So I just took a little, a little piece of painter's tape, added it to the end, and cut it off, so that I could string the beads and then when I strung the beads onto the twine I did this alternating the colors. Once you have all your beads strung you can put the garland to the side and then you can use that Dollar Tree jute twine to make a tassel. All I'm going to do is spread my fingers far enough apart to basically the length that I want my tassel to be and then I'm going to wrap the twine around my finger a bunch of times you can do it as many or as little times as you would like the more you do it the thicker your tassel will be so now I'm just going to make a loop up at the top take another piece of twine and simply start wrapping it around and then I'm going to tie it into place Cut any of the extra pieces that are hanging off the top and then you're going to also cut down at the bottom where the big loops are and then you want to make all of the little pieces one length. And now you have a cute little twine tassel. But I wanted to actually add a little bit more to this so I'm going to use this new lace crochet ribbon. I think it is so pretty but I could not figure out how to get it off here. Like they had to have stapled it after they wrapped it. You'll see what I mean if you buy it, but you get so much of this for only $1.25 and it is absolutely beautiful. All I'm going to do is take the lace ribbon and just wrap it over the top of that little loop and then cut it down to the same size as the tassel pieces. And of course, I could not stop there because I've had this ribbon for a while. I'm always seeing it in Dollar Tree and I've been wanting to use it for so long. So I'm going to actually cut a little piece to the same size as that lace ribbon. And then I'm going to dovetail my ends of both of the ribbon and the lace ribbon by just folding the ribbon in half and then cutting at an inward diagonal angle. Then stack one ribbon on top of the other and then loop them over the loop that is on the top, basically the little loop. And then you're going to take another piece of twine and you're going to wrap it right where you wrapped it before, basically pinching it in the same exact spot and then wrapping some jute twine around the top, creating a little loop just like before and then tie it into place. Cut off any extra bits and you have this super cute little tassel. Dollar Tree carries this pack of galvanized metal tags and they do come three in a pack and they also come with their own little bit of twine, but we're only going to use one of the tags for this DIY. Using a chippy brush from the Dollar Tree, which also comes in a three pack, I take that white Rust-Oleum chalk paint and I just kind of do a messy little paint job right on top of the little metal tag. Once the paint is completely dry, I'm going to take that cute little chicken transfer again, and I love the fact that you can use these transfers over and over again. All you have to do is just go wash them off and place them right back on their backing. So I'm going to fill it in with some chalk paste. You again can use chalk paint if you would like. Once the chicken is completely filled in, just like before, all you have to do is peel off the transfer and you have this cute little chicken. Then you can wash the transfer and use it again next time. I see these rub-on transfers at Dollar Tree all the time and all I'm going to do is just cut off these arch like leaves down here at the bottom and then I'm going to just use my Cricut tool and just kind of transfer one at the top and one at the bottom of the chicken. You do not have to have a Cricut tool to transfer these. All you have to do is use a credit card. I mean, I've used my fingernail before. They really do transfer very easily and you could find many, many things around your house that you could use.
And look how adorable that tag is. I love how this turned out. To assemble the garland, all you have to do is tie on your tassel at one end of the garland, then tie the metal tag on the other end. When tying both of these on, you want to make sure that you don't tie them too tight so that you can't like twist and move your bead garland if you would like. So you want to make sure you have a little bit of space, like you see how I have about an inch of space between the tassel and the beads. So you want to just make sure that you have just a little bit of leeway. And again, that is so that you can kind of wrap your beads around something if you would like and that they don't stay straight and not be able to move or curve. Once you have the tassel and tag on and you cut off any of the extra, look at how adorable this DIY turned out. Just like with the other DIYs, I think this garland turned out absolutely adorable. I am obsessed with that tag and I am so glad that it matches all of our other DIYs that we did in this video. And one more time, look how absolutely gorgeous those stained beads are. I love how this garland turned out. DIY number six is super easy, but they are so stinking cute, and that is these little cow pots. For this DIY, you will need a three pack of the little terracotta pots from Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to simply paint them white with, you guessed it, the white Rust-Oleum chalk paint. When I painted mine, I did make sure to get the outside and the inside as well. Once they are all three painted, I'm going to use these really cute farmhouse stickers from Dollar Tree, and I was so excited when I found these. The cows are so stinking cute, so I'm just going to take them and place them right down at the bottom of the terracotta pots on all three of the pots. Once I have all the cows on, I do spray them with a spray sealer. You could use Mod Podge if you would like. I used my black chalk paint and a little teeny tiny brush and I just added a little bit of black paint going along the top and the bottom of the pot. You could use a paint pen for this as well. And again, I do this to all three of the terracotta pots. And here is how these three little cow pots turned out. I think these little cow pots are just too stinking cute. I love the fact that the cows kind of really blend in with a background of the white chalk paint so it doesn't even look like there's a sticker on them. You could place them in the three group setting or you could actually place them all around, maybe put one on a tray, add one on a shelf, or like I said, keep them all together. On to DIY number seven, and that is these farmhouse tags. For this DIY, you will need two of the new Dollar Tree tags. They are in the beach section. I love the fact that they have this cork board on top, but one of them we're going to have front facing, and then the other one we're going to use the back side because it is all wood on that side. And we are going to create some more black faux stain by again just mixing some of that paint into some water. The more paint that you add, the darker your stain will be, so definitely keep that in mind. Then I just take my paintbrush and start placing the faux stain just like you would paint. You can wipe off the excess if you would like it to be lighter, but I did like the color that it was turning out by just painting it right onto the tag. And you guys, look how amazing that faux stain technique works out. I mean, who would have thought? I think this is absolutely gorgeous, and I love the fact that there's no harsh chemicals. Once the tag is dry, I'm going to take another one of those paints transfer transfers and I'm going to use this tall windmill here and it did have another like top windmill part where I cut it off, but I used that in another DIY. So I'm going to be using this tall windmill here. I place my transfer off to the right side of the tag and then I make sure that there is no air bubbles at all. And then I add my white chalk paste by simply squeegeeing it onto the transfer. Once you have it all filled in, peel off your transfer and reveal that gorgeous image, wash your transfer off, place it back on its backing, and use it again next time. For the second tag, I'm just going to take that same black faux stain and I'm just going to go around where the wood part is on the tag and only the wood part. So basically just creating that border. And I do go over this one two times. 
Then I take another piece of that painter's tape and I'm just going to tape it off right where the top of that coral is so that I can paint right underneath the painter's tape with my white Rust-Oleum chalk paint. I did end up giving this two coats so that you could not see the coral peeking through and you want to get as close to the edge of the cork board as you possibly can. Then once it is dry, go ahead and remove that frog tape. To create the strip of white where I'm going to be placing the letters, I use the frog tape and place it close to the top of the tag and then I take another piece and place it about an inch to an inch and a half below that first piece. Then just fill in that strip with the white chalk paint and once you have it filled in, you can just remove the tape and you have a perfect little strip where you can put your letters. For the stickers, I will be using these stickers that I got off of Amazon. They are kind of in a Ray Dunn style font and I have used many, many sticker letters and these ones are absolutely amazing and you get a whole bunch of sheets. So I will definitely have the link down in the description box because these are definitely a must grab. I love these sticker letters. So all I'm going to do is place down the words farm sweet farm. I found this cute little pig at, I believe it was Dollar General, but it could have been Family Dollar, but I'm pretty sure it was Dollar General. They're the yellow tag. So I'm just going to cut off the metal hanger. And they did have other farm animals as well, but I just liked the cute little pig. And I didn't think the tag was going to be as bad as Dollar Tree, but of course it was. So I just got rid of it with my heat gun. And then I went in with my black chalk paint and painted the entire pig. I wouldn't have necessarily had to remove the tag, but I wanted my pig to face a certain direction, so that is why I removed the tag. Then I just went in with some sandpaper and kind of went around the edges to reveal a little bit of the white that was underneath. And then I just take my glue gun and add some glue to the back of the pig and glue it right to the center of where I painted the white on the tag. Where the hanger was at on the pig, there's holes and I did not like how you could see the white through there. So I just took my black chalk paint and a small brush and filled both of those holes in. Then I lay my tags down how I liked them being placed before I glued them down. Then I just kind of lift it up, add some glue and place it right back down where it was at. I use a black paint pen and I just trace like the top of that white part making a nice little thin line so that it creates a really thin little black border. For the bow I made a little three loop finger bow with the gingham ribbon from Dollar Tree and I did not put that footage in here because I'm still trying to perfect that so it took a few tries for that three loop bow but I just hot glued it right to where the little piggy's bum is. Using a few more beads from the Easter garland, I paint two of them black and three white, but I did only end up using two of those white. For the hanger, I'm going to be using some of the black cotton twine from Dollar Tree, just like we used earlier. I cut two of the same length pieces, and then I'm going to fold one of the pieces in half, and then take that loop and place it through the hole in the tag. And then I'm going to take the other two ends, place it through that loop, and pull. And then I do the exact same thing on the other side. And then I tie all four of those strands together into one piece up at the top. But when you tie it, you do want to tie it to where you have some of the strands left over hanging out of the top so that you can add your beads. The holes that are in the beads are kind of small, so I'm just going to cut off a few of these strands, leaving two of the longest strands left. Then all I did was string on the beads and I alternated the colors as well. Once you have all four of the beads on, go ahead and tie a simple knot up at the top, big enough so that your beads will not come through and you have a cute little hanger. And here is a look at how this absolutely beautiful DIY turned out. I absolutely love the fact that you do not have to have a Cricut or Chocotour prices to make beautiful high-end home decor just like all of these and so much more. I am obsessed with that stained wood with the cork board and that white with the black. I love this tag. I think they are absolutely gorgeous and one of my favorites for sure. 
As always, I truly hope you all enjoyed these DIYs as much as I enjoyed sharing them with you. And if you like the content you've seen here today, please hit the thumbs up. It really helps out my channel. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get notified each time I post new uploads. Thank you all so much for watching. It really means so much to my family and I. My kids and I definitely want to say thank you. And I hope you all have a blessed, blessed week. And I hope to see you and a few new friends on the next one. Bye.